Hello and welcome back to the Cracking Bang YouTube channel. Today we're solving 451 sort characters by frequency. Given a string s, sort it in decreasing order of the frequency of the characters. The frequency of a character is the number of times it appears in the string and return the sorted string. If there's multiple answers, you may return any of them. So we have the string tree and we want to return e e r t. So the reason that we do this is because we are returning it in decreasing order on the frequency of the characters. So the ones that are more frequent would come first and we can rearrange any characters that come the same. So obviously in this one, there are how many E's are there? There's a count of two E's, there's an R and there's a T with one count. Let's look at another example, CCCAAA. So obviously in this one, there are three C's and three A's. Um, so we can return this in any order we want, right? So we can return CCC AAA or AAA CCC. It doesn't matter. Um, they just have to be grouped together and by count. Uh, in this case, we can see that we actually can have a uppercase character. So we have A, and this is counted differently from the lowercase A. Don't fall into the trap of thinking they're the same. So we have A, uh, lowercase A, and then B, which is two. So we could return B, B, a, A, or we could return B, B, A, A. So as you can see from the, just looking at the question, it's, it's relatively simple how to do this, but the way that you actually wanna solve this is uh, quite tricky. So what you can do is you can one, uh, you can build a map, right? We can do a map for each character to its count, right? And then you can sort the map values and basically just return them right and you're done so uh, unfortunately uh, because we have to can define a string as well this is going to add extra time complexity so to actually build the string from the values we get it's going to cost big o of n because we need to use a string builder and we have to append the characters there and then obviously to sort we have n log n right no sorry this uh, it's actually just n log n for the sort, apologies, um, which is not ideal. There's actually a solution out there which can bring the time complexity down to uh, big O of n, and same with the space complexity. So how do we want to do this? This solution is very, very strange. It's called a bucket sort. Uh, bucket sort. So the way that we're going to do this is we're still going to build a map which takes characters and um, we're gonna get the letter to the count, right? So what we're gonna do in this case is we are going to build an array of arrays and each index of this array, so zero, one, two, three, four, is gonna contain an array of all the characters that have that count. So we're gonna build this list of lists so basically, once we get our mapping dictionary, we can iterate over the mapping dictionary and basically place characters into their respective buckets, right? You know, maybe a character has four, uh, three, blah, blah, blah. We put it in that bucket. And then what we want to do is we actually want to go back um, from right to left over this array here. Obviously, because everything is implicitly sorted, because it's a bucket, right? Everything at index zero will occur zero times. So this shouldn't even be there. Uh, there shouldn't have anything. Everything in index one will occur once. Everything in index two occurs twice and so on and so forth. So basically by starting at the end of the array, we have an implicit uh, sorting here. So we actually don't need to call our sort function. We can just you know get a big O of N uh, runtime. So we'll basically just go, okay, we'll start with the, elements in whatever the last position is here, we'll check, do we have elements? Uh, if we do, we'll add them to our string builder, and then we'll go to the next one, is it empty? Uh, then we don't have to do anything, and then just keep going down until we exhaust everything. Everything will be in our string builder, which at the end we just need to join together, and that's our final solution. So as you can see, everything here is big O of N. So that is <laughs> what is called a bucket sort. It's very weird. If you've never seen it before, unlikely that you'll come up with it, but this is a very cool problem to teach you that. So now let's actually code this up and see what it would look like. Okay, so we went over our 
intuition here. Now let's actually code it up. Remember that the first thing we want to do is actually build that map from letter to how many times it occurs. So we're going to say the count dict is going to equal to what? Collections dot default dict. We're going to pass an int so it initializes it to zero. Now you might be wondering why don't I just use collections.counter? Why am I actually going to go over uh, each one? And the reason for this is I actually need the max length here of uh, of a given character. And actually, maybe not max length is a bad um, name for it. It should be the max frequency. So I need a variable called the max frequency. And the reason for this is remember we're creating a you know, a list which contains buckets and in each side of each bucket, we're going to store the, you know, counts for that. But how many buckets do I actually create? Do I create 100,000, a million? I don't know, we need to essentially create as many buckets as whatever the maximum fr uh, frequency of a character is, right? If the highest count is five, there's no reason for me to create more buckets than five, because obviously nothing's going to have a count higher than five. Why do I need more buckets? So this is why we need this maximum frequency to basically keep track of the number of buckets um, that we have, because otherwise there's, we could just end up creating, you know, a million, right? when we only don't need that many. So we want to just have this to eventually put a cap on the number of buckets we create, because we don't want to just create empty buckets for no reason. We will have to create buckets from zero to whatever max frequency is. Some of them will be empty uh, because it's just possible that they won't uh, be populated. There's no way for us to know unless we actually go through the count dictionary, but we don't want to do that. Um, so we need maximum frequency to basically keep track of the highest bucket uh, we need to create. So let's actually populate our dictionary now. So we're going to say for char in S, we're going to say count dict is going to be equal to, um, sorry, count dict for that character. We want to increment its count and we want to say that the maximum uh, frequency equals to max of whatever the current, sorry, max frequency and whatever the count of that character we just added to the dictionary was. Of course, you could just do this at the end uh, once you've already populated your count dict and just take the maximum of the values, but that's an extra pass through our count dict. So why bother doing that when we can just do it as we go along and save uh, one pass through our array. So now what we want to do is we've populated our count dict. We know what the maximum frequency is. We actually need to create all of these empty buckets. <clears throat> so we're going to say buckets is going to equal to a list of empty lists for I in range max frequency um, plus one. And obviously plus one because range is not inclusive of the end, but maximum frequency needs to be in there, right? We can't just cut off the maximum frequency because then that would not be added to our solution. So it needs to be max frequency plus one. Now we've created the buckets and we actually need to populate them. So we're gonna say for char count in uh, count dict dot items. What are we going to do? We're going to say buckets for that count. We're going to append the current character, right? And now we have populated all of our buckets. Now we need to actually build the solution. So obviously strings are immutable. So we'll need to use a string builder here. So we'll say string builder equals an empty list. And we're going to say for I in range from max frequency down to minus one and we're going to go decrementing by one so basically we're looping over the array from right to left we're going to say that the <clears throat> um, current bucket is equal to buckets of i now remember it could be the case that this bucket is empty it's not guaranteed to actually have something in it all we know is that we need buckets from zero up until max frequency but there could be some buckets that we created in here that actually don't have anything in them because it could just be the case that they don't actually have a frequency um, for that character right there could just be nothing with frequency three um, for example so we need to actually check if current bucket so basically if this bucket is not empty then what we want to do is we want to say for chars um yeah for char in current bucket so for each character in the current bucket 
Remember that order doesn't matter at this point. Um, we simply just want to add it to our string builder. So we're going to say string builder dot append and we want to add the character. But remember, we need to add the character how many times it uh, appears, right? We can't just add the character. We have to add all the instances of that character. And how many times does it occur? Well, i times. So we're going to say character times i. So basically, if we have, you know, a and we multiply it by five, um, what this will do in Python is just like a, 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 a. So this will just create that. Okay, so we have char times i. <clears throat> and that's really all we have to do. So this for loop will generate our string builder for us. And it will check all of the buckets we've created at the end. Obviously, we have our string builder and we need to return it as a string. So we're going to return dot join uh, string builder and we should be good to go. So let's just run this accepted and the solution should also be accepted. Perfect. Now, what is the time and space complexity? Let's think about it. Well, creating our count dict, this is going to take one pass through the array. So this is big O of n here. Um, the buckets, this is going to take, you know, potentially big O of n as well. If there's, you know, it depends on the max frequency. Um, we also need to pass through our count dict another time to populate the buckets. And then we need to go through the buckets one more time. So in total, we've made basically four passes uh, through our input. So this is going to be, I think, or is it three? It doesn't matter. It's it's some, uh, it's either three or four, I don't recall, um, times n. But asymptotically, the reason it doesn't matter is because it's the constants will go away and it's just big O of n. For the space, same thing. We have our count dict and then we also have the buckets. Um, and then there's one bucket basically for however much the maximum frequency is. So this will be bounded based on um, the frequency of the word. So if all the characters in S are the same, then the, the amount of space we need for the buckets is just going to be big O of n um, there. So our time and space are both bounded on the number of characters in here. So that is how you solve it. It is a bit of a strange solution. Some interviewers may not actually like this because this buckets part, you may actually be creating quite a lot of buckets. What if the string is very, very large, uh, in which case you will need to create a lot of empty memory. They might ask you, okay, well, what if space is an issue? And this, this is the point where you can use the hash map solution and then sort it. Um, you will bring down the overall space complexity. Obviously the time complexity will be worse. So this is actually one where you should discuss with your interviewer um, before you start coding and say, okay, look, there's two solutions. I can put this in a hash map and then sort the values that will give me an n log n runtime. Uh, but the space complexity will be less because I only need to basically just store the counts and that's it. With the bucket sort, I can bring the time complexity down to big O of n, but even though the space complexity is still technically big O of n, you are creating a lot of space. And if space is an issue in our system for some reason, we may not want to go with this solution. So that is the best way to approach this problem because bucket sort is quite weird. It is technically the most optimal solution, but this is a good example of bringing up multiple solutions with your interviewer, scoping out what's important in this problem, and then talking about the pros and the cons of each solution and coding one up. That is going to be a much better sing signal for your interviewer that you're a good candidate than did you just memorize the bucket sort solution. I think being able to trade them off and even if you go with the less optimal solution because that's what your interviewer wants, it just shows that you are thinking about the problem, you understand the scope of it and that there are pros and cons to solutions. So just my little rant there, um, remember that it's often important to trade off solutions when it's a bit of a weird question like this. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, why not leave it a like and a comment it helps with the engagement. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching to the end and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.